So here's something interesting that I noticed that I thought I'd talk about just because I thought that it was, I don't know, an interesting topic, something I was noticing, and therefore something that I wanted to discuss with you guys. Now, uh, you guys will know and understand this central point because it's something that has been true for a long time. David Pakman seems to be the most controversial of all of the, you know, progressive figures because David will take these sort of, t he will have these certain takes in certain areas that, you know, are not typical of progressives, uh, you know, of at least the progressives who are, you know, big content creators. So, you know, that being uh, Sam Cedar, Jimmy Dore, Kyle Kalinske, of course, uh, those being the main ones we're talking about here. Um, those often have to do with Latin American politics. You know, it's been going, they've, he's been having some disagreements with the left or what he likes to call the Leninist left, which I don't understand, nor does it really make any sense to me. I don't know what that means, nor do I really know who he's talking about. But uh, nonetheless, that's what he calls them. <laughs> And uh, there are other areas like that when it comes to Elizabeth Warren. And I also saw him caping for the public option and stuff like that. Um, but I do have to say I feel kind of bad for him because, you know, it's got to be pretty stressful to constantly be under, uh, you know, this controversial, you know, stuff. And, you know, I know what that's like. It's got to be pretty stressful for him. Um, but another thing that he's done, and we're going to get to the Latin American stuff in a second here. But in this video, someone calls in to ask, I guess, how can we stop irrational unsubscriptions? David Pakman has sort of taken on this trend where he just does videos playing the victim, whining constantly. And it's pretty, uh, pretty annoying. It's just not, you know, it's pretty, uh, it's just embarrassing. You know, he constantly does this. He's doing this for a long time. Now, to be fair to him, it looks like the algorithm is actually, you know, uh, not doing him very well. So I will, I will let you guys know about that. Because at the time that he was complaining about the algorithm, his channel was gaining 30,000 subscribers a month. Now the algorithm isn't, isn't really helping him much. So I guess, I guess we can give him that. But let's play this and hear this out. I've been watching your show uh, on YouTube for a while now, and I've noticed that you have to consistently qualify every statement you make when criticizing the left or something similar, the Tulsi Gabbard or Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or what have you. And yeah. you've said people send you irrational messages or unsubscribe and, and get upset. So my question is, how do we solve this problem of people not being able to have rational conversations and listening to mild criticism perhaps, or just different viewpoints? Yeah, I think it's pretty outrageous that you have to go to these lengths for your own audience. It's really akin to talking to children. And even in this case, where the people writing you likely largely agree with you. Yeah. Um, so just wondering what your take on that is, but love the show. Uh, and thanks. Have a good Listen, day. I don't have the answer. And I, I think it's important to say this is a small percentage of my audience, but it is a loud percentage of my audience. And yeah, I mean, listen, I, I say Warren's leading the polls and I get absolutely destroyed. I say Bernie is stronger on money out of politics and I get absolutely destroyed because I'm picking sides or whatever. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the latter part of the statement. I don't think he's getting destroyed for saying that Bernie's better than money on money on the issue of money in politics. You know, I'm doing the best job I can to tell you what the facts are and to interpret the facts as best as I can. And so there's there's two ugly sides to this. There's the political side, which is stuff like that. There's also, you know, I mean, people, I think one of the criticisms of evangelicals who vote for Trump is that they claim to espouse certain values and then they don't vote them. I don't want to do that. So one of the things that I do on this program is as a business owner, I try to actually live the values that I espouse. I think people in the U.S. are overworked. They need more vacation, for example. So basically, he just goes on to explain here that someone, uh, you know, uh, remove their membership to the David Pakman show because they took too many vacations. Um, and yeah, I think that's a stupid thing to do, obviously, of course. So there are two things I have to say here, okay? One of them being that he, him making these sort of whiny, oh, look at me, I'm a victim type videos as he has like 745,000 subs and pulls hundreds of thousands of views every day and, you know, thou you know thousands of subscribers a month. Now that the sub increase has kind of gone down for some reason, it gets an algorithm. But, 
you know, nonetheless, it, it just comes off really whiny and annoying. Very annoying. But I will say that there, in this situation, there is some merit to what he's trying to say. Because, like I think in the Elizabeth Warren video he did, he had to explain that he said in the beginning that he doesn't do the polls. <laughs> which is very funny. But... You know, obviously he doesn't, he's, no, he's not the one conducting the polls. But yeah, Elizabeth Warren pulled ahead of Biden at one point and pulled ahead of Bernie and is still pulling ahead of Bernie as of right now. So there are certainly some, you know, situations where, okay, I get it. Some of them, okay. But still, this sort of trend of whininess is kind of annoying. And I thought we'd just look at some of these comments because I find them to be super hilarious. Um, it says, you're doing an online political show... 2019 and constantly complaining about the mildest criticisms the amount of time you waste on the subject is ridiculous you can't make everyone happy a certain percentage of the audience is going to complain regardless of what you say be honest hold your integrity and don't pander to the morons you'll be fine your numbers are always going up stop wasting time and energy worrying about this nonsense now david pakman hearted this uh, this comment for some reason i'm not really sure why why that is but i mean people are just going people are just you know going after this guy you don't. Everyone has a right to subscribe for any any reason. The solution is simple. Stop living under the fear of being ostracized uh, for disagreeing with groupthink. Can David quit being a victim and just cover the news? I, I mostly agree with that sentiment, personally. How can we stop people from doing what they want? I knew this is just going to be whining again. So, look. I mean, it, it's just... It is it is kind of annoying. I mean, I'm going to keep it real with you. That This is kind of annoying. Despite the fact that I will admit that there are certain scenarios in which I can understand him and his criticism. Some of them I can understand. Now, moving on from that, he just posted this video yesterday, okay? It's titled, The Revolutionary Left is Getting Bolivia Wrong. Now, of course, Bolivia, uh, Bolivian President Evo Morales stepped down. It was essentially a, a coup um, in which he was, you know, he's basically forced um, you know, by the, uh, the military, uh, you know, of Bolivia to step down. And he, you know, his house was ravaged, essentially, and, you know, it was just really bad. But he's here trying to explain some nuances, is what he's doing in his mind now. Uh, as you can see from the like to dislike, you know, it's hanging on for dear life, 539, 424. I don't know what that's going to end up being later on, but, man, it is surely hanging on for dear life, certainly. Um... And so I don't know where that's going to be, you know, tomorrow. Maybe the, maybe the dislikes take over the likes. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But in the intro of this video, he basically explains that, you know, the revolutionary left is his new non-pejorative term for the Leninist left, which is what he previously called them, which is very funny to me. Because I never understood the Leninist left term. It didn't really make any sense to me. But I will say I agree that uh, term limits are good. I like term limits. I, I think that term limits are definitely an important thing to make sure leaders don't stay in too long, of course. Also, I think it, you know, it's something good for Congress as well. I mean, I think that you take out, when you do that, you know, you take out these career politicians who, you know, get rich off of their office, who are rich people who go into office. You know, you get dinosaurs like Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein out. Um, and yeah, Bernie would be out as well, but, uh, you know, then you'd have more of an opportunity for progressives to go in because you'd have a more realistic chance of actually winning. So, uh, there's that. And then this, this is the final one that we're actually looking at here. Okay. This one, uh, is a very, very weird, uh, this is weird to me. Okay. Now, obviously creators, uh, you know, making money and, setting up uh patreon pages and all that stuff that's great obviously right that's what creators need to do to make it you know that's how they make their money to you know live obviously this is just weird okay the way that this is worded is just weird it says david has a sad cheer him up and support independent media by grabbing a membership with the coupon code youtube 50 dropping the price of any membership by 50 percent Get it at joinpacman.com. Now, I'm actually a David Pacman member. I joined up when it was only like 20-something bucks. So I was like, oh, that's a really good deal. Um, but, you know, the, the way that this is worded is just super cringe. And also, it does seem to be the case. I personally feel like the David Pacman show is more uh, sort of aggressive with their marketing for their stuff. I mean, Kyle doesn't do anything 
in terms of marketing whatsoever. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't say, like, go, you know, go to my Patreon page and stuff like that. Sam does it during his live show because it's his live show. Um, certainly the most aggressive. Now, the first top two comments here are people supporting, uh, or I guess three or four supporting. Um, oh, actually, it looks like they deleted, uh, it looks like they deleted a lot of comments that were against him, actually. Um, <laughs> because I saw a bunch of comments here that were not happy about this. But uh, it looks like David Pakman has deleted them, which uh, I guess makes sense. Probably not a good look to keep those up. But anyways, the moral of this story, okay, the conclusion to take from this. David Pakman always finds himself in controversy. He's, uh, he's always in more controversy than any of the other YouTubers. You know, Jimmy Dore has his own sort of echo chamber. Kyle has his own echo chamber. Um, and then, you know, Sam, Sam will have some controversial stuff too, because he'll go after a lot more of the prominent right-wing figures like Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin and Joe Rogan. And so they'll get a bunch of, you know, sort of, uh, raids from those people's fans. But David takes a lot of heat from his own fans. He is somebody who is unique in taking a lot of heat from his own fans. So... And that's got to suck. It's got to be pretty stressful to constantly be under so much, uh, you know, just so much of a barrage. But, uh, you know, let me know what you think about this down below. Very curious to hear it.